You know, guys, I think today is one of the most dangerous days when it comes to gambling for amateurs out there outside the Super Bowl. Why? Because of the spectacle sports, as I like to call it today. Because you've got guys that normally aren't that much into horse racing who may want to have a couple of dollars down because they're going to be watching the Kentucky Derby. But even more so, you've got the Mayweather Pacquiao fight. And even the most casual boxing fans will be interested in this one. And again, you may be wanting to put some money down on one fight or the other. And here's the thing. These type of spectacle events, just like the Super Bowl, not to that magnitude, but similar, they're generally enjoyed in the public with others. And that gets the juices running, and that just compels you almost to put money down. Well, that's great if you're a guy like me that follows this and does this every single day. That doesn't guarantee I'm going to win every day, but it's great for me because I already have the inherent advantage over you. But for the casual guys that come out and just bet the Super Bowl because it's the Super Bowl, bet the pay, May, uh, Mayweather Pacquiao fight tonight because it's been so hyped over the past two months, or even the Kentucky Derby because it's the Kentucky Derby. That's where the danger often falls. But listen, lucky for you, I know absolutely nothing about horse racing, so I won't even venture into a guess on who's going to win the Kentucky Derby because unlike most of you, I won't even be watching the damn game. No, instead, I'm going to break down in depth the Mayweather Pacquiao fight and give you my prediction here in just a moment. Now, you may recall regular followers of the video report. I gave you my prediction for this fight the day it was officially announced a couple of months ago. Nothing has changed. Also, I've got a free play in baseball coming up on the Mets and Nationals. That's to follow. However, I have to be honest with you, the best bet on the board tonight is actually game number seven of the Spurs Clippers series. But hey, first, this being Saturday, each and every Saturday over the past four years, I've given you a money-saving discount coupon code that could potentially save you hundreds of dollars off your total purchase price. Well, it is Saturday, so nothing has changed. And today, you can save 25% off your total purchase price by using coupon code 25%. That's 25-P-E-R-C-E-N-T, no space between the number and the word, 25-P-E-R-C-E-N-T. It is a mix and match coupon, which means you can use it to buy any combination of handicappers, picks, and or packages. The only stipulation, it's a one-time usage coupon. So you can't come in and buy one handicapper's plays and then three hours later come in and buy another. No, you got to put everything in your shopping cart at one time to maximize your savings. And again, it's a 25% discount off your total purchase price. Should you have any questions, you can always contact customer service. Also keep in mind, if you happen to be involved in a long-term package with a handicapper, you can then renew or re-up. Let's say you have five days left of a 30-day package of handicapper XYZ. Well, you can go ahead and buy another 30-day package. You will save 25% using that coupon code. And if you have any instant rebates, they are applicable as well. And your service will automatically be extended from the five days you had left to a new 30 days for a total of 35. And it's all done automatically by the system. So again, should you ever have any questions, just contact customer service. I said it yesterday. I said it the day before. I'm going to say it again today. If you have not made a fortune in the NBA playoffs, shame on you because clearly you have not been following Steve Budin's number one crew out of New York City. Number one for the past five years and certainly number one in this postseason because today they have playoff winner number 17 of 19 going since last June's NBA Finals 5-0 sweep. And it happens to be 50 dime postseason winner number 16 of 18 dating back to last season. They have gone 11 and 3, 11 and 3 so far with their playoff plays. And you've gotten every single one of them at a huge discounted price. And today, no different. You get the game seven 50 dime winner on the Spurs Clippers for half price by using coupon code NYC. NYC. No different than last night's half-price winner on the Atlanta Hawks. No different than Thursdays on the Chicago Bulls. No different than Wednesdays on Atlanta. No different than Tuesdays on Houston. You got them all for half-price and half-price going again today using coupon code NYC. Now listen, all your other coupons, discounts, etc. are available over on the homepage. Let me quickly get to your baseball complimentary play here today. We're going to take the New York Mets. Uh, taking the Mets here today at home uh, with Jonathan Nice on the hill uh, against the Nationals and Gio Gonzalez. Listen, guys, I, I got to be honest with you. I was not impressed with the way uh, Gonzalez is pitching any of his starts so far this season. 
it doesn't matter to me that he's 5-1 and one with a 1.88 earned run average in uh, eight career starts at City Field. What matters to me is that this season, in four starts, he has an ERA over 5, and he's walked 11 and allowed 29 hits. That's 40 base runners and 23 in the third inning. So, again, it also doesn't matter to me that he struck out 22 batters in those 23 in the third innings. What matters to me is the 40 base runners. And in three road starts so far this year, he has an earned run average of seven point, uh, excuse me, 6 0.75. What can you say about the Mets? Last night they won four nothing after losing the opener in the series eight to two. That snapped the three game skid. But before that they had won uh, 13 out of 15 games. Meanwhile the Nationals had scored 34 runs while winning three straight, but they were handcuffed last night by uh, Matt Harvey and limited to just six hits in that shutout. Uh, Mets are now 11 and one at City Field. And I'm going to go with New York once again today at uh, a near pick em price. Now, let's get to boxing. Okay, my background in boxing. Um, God, first fight I ever went to after growing up watching uh, boxing on television with my dad when boxing was free as a little kid and Muhammad Ali was my favorite fighter, okay? So I grew up watching those fights in the 70s and the early 80s. And uh, first fight I ever went to, my dad took me to uh, the very first Duran uh, Leonard fight. Uh, you know, and I think about other memorable boxing events uh, that uh, I've either witnessed or covered as a reporter. Best fight I ever saw, maybe the best nine minutes I've ever seen in boxing, Hagler Hearns. And you owe it to yourself if you haven't ever seen that to uh, check it out on YouTube. Worst fight I ever saw was uh, Tyson and Spinks. It was over before I had a chance to sit down and drink a half a cup of beer. Um, <laughs> most money I ever won on a fight. Uh, God, it was a snowy night in Atlantic City, New Jersey. I was going down to cover the Iran Barkley Roberto Duran fight. Nobody gave Duran even a chance in that one. I saw him pre fight. And I thought, man, he has that demonish look on his face. And if you ever saw Roberto Duran in his prime, you knew. And I looked at his body and I thought, my God, this is not the bloated Roberto Duran I've been accustomed to seeing here in the past few years in the waning days of his career. And I happened to get my father uh, a press pass for that fight as well, since nobody cared about the fight. But I wanted to see Duran in person again and see if he had anything left. And he won the damn fight. And it was a great fight, too. So that was definitely uh, the most interesting and uh, one of the best fights and the most money I've ever won on a fight, having Duran in that one. Toughest fight? Well, that would be Hagler and Leonard. And why? Because for about an eight-year stretch, um, I covered just about every single major boxing match in the 80s. And that was back in the days, remember, before the Internet. <laughs> you know, so before you had Twitter, before you had uh, your hand held and you could just send everything. So in those days, uh, I was working for a wire service as a managing editor, but for the boxing, the big boxing things, well, I had to sign myself to press credentials and go cover the fight. So... Literally, I had to go ahead and call the fight round by round into a phone, and then somebody else on the other end is transcribing it and sending it over the wire service. And we catered to TV and radio. And, of course, Hagler and uh, Leonard back then, that was a mega fight, a mega fight that totally overshadowed uh, what you've got going here tonight with Mayweather and Pacquiao. And it was an interesting fight. But, you know, the way I looked at the fight, and judged the fight in terms of scoring was based on, it wasn't about Hagler's power, it was about Leonard's ability to box, to land the punches, to accumulate the points, to give him the decision in the fight. So the fight ended, and it came that time. You know, they're ready, sitting there at the other end, and they're ready to send out the button and says, who does Al say is winning this fight? And it goes out of all TV and radio stations and newspapers, et cetera. And I said, Leonard takes the decision. Within one minute, and I'm not kidding you, within one minute, somebody from ESPN calls and says, are they sure? Is your guy sure? Now think about that. Now, I just put my name on this, right? I just sent out the thing, and somebody from ESPN is calling and saying, am I sure? Well, hey, I understand, because other news organizations were calling the fight for Hagler. Leonard, of course, won, but it all came down to a way you judged a fight. And that is going to be the case again here tonight, with Mayweather and Pacquiao. First of all, forget about that fight of the century stuff. This would have been the fight of the decade if it was last decade, not this decade, okay? This fight should have been done six, seven years ago. The only thing that really makes this a more entertaining fight or an entertaining fight, period. I shouldn't say a more entertaining fight. An entertaining fight, period, is that you have two boxers, both on the down, downside of their career, going up. 
It would have been more exciting if these two fighters at the same stage of their career with better skills and at a younger age would have fought five, six years ago. But that being said, we have what we have, and we have to deal with what we've got here. Listen, you got Floyd Mayweather, who is one of the best ring tacticians maybe in the history of the sport. And that says something. This guy is a defensive fighter. Early in his career, he had the punching power. He really doesn't have much punching power anymore, really. I mean, what's he knocked out two of his last ten opponents, okay? But he's a guy who is going to make you work in the ring. And what don't you have on the other hand? You have Pacquiao, this little guy that wants to come in and he throws a flurry of punches, kind of like Duran really, in his heyday. Um, guy that throws a lot of punches. What I said from the outset of this fight, when it was first announced, still holds true. The two numbers that you've got to keep in mind are five and two. Five is the reach advantage that, Ma uh, that Floyd Mayweather has. Five-inch reach advantage, okay? Two is the two-inch height advantage that Mayweather has. This is not uh, Vladimir Klitschko, okay, uh, facing an undersized opponent, okay? But still, five and two are the two most important numbers, and they will be the key to this fight. Because what I anticipate happening here is that Mayweather may have an ego, but he's not dumb. He is not going to mix it up in the middle of the ring with Manny just to say, hey, I took on, excuse me, I took on Manny and I beat the hell out of him. No. That was a failing strategy when the very first fight I went to see, when Leonard decided to go man-to-man -man with Duran and ended up losing the fight, okay? It won't work. It will not happen. Mayweather is simply too smart. Again, he is a tactician. Manny Pacquiao is going to have to work his way inside because, again, he's two inches shorter and he's got to overcome that five-inch reach advantage that Mayweather has. So Pacquiao is going to throw a lot of punches. He's going to try to be aggressive and go to the body, but that means he's also the smaller guy has to take the chance to get inside. Big guys always beat small guys. They chop them down eventually. And when little guys have to come inside, that opens them up, okay? But what Mayweather is going to do here is he's not going to allow Pacquiao to close down the ring, to shorten the distance, to bring the ropes in. He's not going to allow him to do it. He is going to outbox Pacquiao here. He is going to use his jab to accumulate points. Now, like I said about Hagler and um, Leonard, often it comes down to how a judge, a reporter in my case, but a judge will interpret a fight. I think when you look at the judging panel here, you have three individuals that generally will, based on their previous fight experience, I think, will generally look at that as being impressive. It's not the power punches that they're going to be going for, but they will respect the defensive performance that Mayweather will put on here tonight. Pacquiao's going to have to take chances. Do I see a knockout in this fight? Absolutely not. I don't see this one ending early. I see this going the distance. I see it being a rather boring fight, to be honest with you, at times, because as you just saw with Klitschko last weekend, a better fight than I think anybody anticipated. It gets kind of boring when you see one guy just throws a jab, throws a jab, throws a jab. I mean, yes, you accumulate the points, you get in some you know, hard shots here and there, but it gets to be kind of a boring fight. Again, Pacquiao's going to have to work his way, being the smaller man, throwing a flurry of punches to get inside. When it comes to two guys that are on the downside of their career also, I think Pacquiao is much further down that mountain than Mayweather has gone. I think Mayweather's skills have eroded some, definitely have uh, father time has robbed him of some of his punching power, but it's definitely robbed Manny of his punching power more. Plus, I question Pacquiao's chin. Listen, um, you saw what happened in the um, Juan Manuel uh, Marquez, the fourth fight. I mean, knocked him down in the third round and then knocked him out cold in the sixth round. Sure, he's won a bunch of decisions since then, but who has he really beaten? And even if you go back and take a look at, let's say, the last five or six years, who has Pacquiao beaten? Oh, he's beaten some big names. Oscar De La Hoya, Ricky Hatton, uh, Shane Mosley, um, Miguel Cotto. But they were all guys further down the hill than he was heading down that hill on the downside of their career. So I kind of discount them. So I think Mayweather takes in a decision. I wouldn't mess around with any of the prop plays, etc. Um, you know, all along, uh, Mayweather has been installed as about a two-to-one favorite, and that's pretty much what he is today. I don't really think that there's going to be 
late money coming in. Well, let me let me revise that. Maybe there is a chance that some late money comes in, more late money comes in uh, on Pacquiao because the public has, uh, you know, they, they like that little underdog story and they love seeing the two, the plus a dollar seventy payback there. Maybe, you know, maybe the odds come down a little bit, but does it matter? I mean, if you're willing to lay 200, aren't you willing to lay a dollar 90? And to anyone out there that doesn't think that you can't make money in boxing, you know, I've bet 20 matches in my career, 20 of them. I've won 19 out of 20. The only time I ever lost a boxing bet was when I let my heart rule instead of my head, and that was Ali against Holmes. Ali, my idol. My my favorite boxing or my favorite uh, athlete of all time, head, not heart. Learned a very important lesson that day. So anyway, I'm going with him. Oh, a couple other things here just to wrap up this video report. Listen, uh, I don't get a chance to talk about boxing much anymore. So here, let me just uh, just throw in a couple of things. Uh, George Foreman. I think he must have been eating something wrong from his grills. Just stick to designing grills here. I don't know what Foreman was possibly thinking when he came out with that statement where he agreed with Mayweather, who also was delusional when he said that, you know, that he was better than Ali and better than Sugar Ray Robinson ever was. Now, listen. Sugar Ray Robinson was before my time. I've only seen the black and white cinescopes of his early fights, okay? He looked like a pretty damn good fighter to me, okay? And then when you're talking about Muhammad Ali, I think that Foreman and Mayweather and everybody out there, yes, it's very interesting to compare errors. It's what we like to do as sports junkies. I don't care what the sport is. Did Hank Aaron have more power than Babe Ruth? Would Babe Ruth have done better in this day and age than Hank Aaron would have done in that? You know, whatever. And unboxing is the same thing. But with Muhammad Ali, you have to take it a step further because you have to split that career in two. You have to say there was Cassius Clay, the lean, trim fighting machine. You could dance around their thing. The ring hit you with the jabs and had the power punches as well. The guy who checked in and fought Sonny Liston at 206 and 210. And then in the first Frazier fight was at 216. Or you have the Muhammad Ali of later years. And it wasn't more, it was more than just the name change and the conversion to Muslim faith. It was the change in his body, the change in his reflexes. Because in that three and a year, half year hiatus, when the whole draft controversy came up, you know, his skills eroded. His hands became more brittle. And he adopted a different style, as Foreman found out in Zaire. Uh, when he just uh, hung out on the ropes, the rope-a-dope, and let Foreman punch himself out. So it's interesting when these guys talk about Ali. Well, again, you have to define which Ali we're talking about. But it still doesn't matter. Mayweather, I'm sorry, even in your peak, you weren't in Sugar Ray Robinson's class. You weren't a better fighter pound for pound than Muhammad Ali. I, it's just, it's lunacy. That's all I can possibly say. Um, and what else? Is there anything else? No. Uh, by the way, Foreman also, I think, was uh, just as delusional as Floyd when he said that he thought the competition nowadays was better than the competition when him and Ali fought. Seriously? I mean, geez, I remember some great heavyweights back in the day, and that's the problem with the heavyweight division, the problem with boxing now, that you simply don't have any names. It seemed like every couple months somebody was fighting. Uh, uh, Ken Norton was there, and Frazier, and Foreman, and Ali, and Ernie Young, and Ernie Shavers, and Larry Holmes was coming up. And then you had the other guys on the outside that weren't bad, you know, the Ron Lyles, the, uh, oh God, I'm running out of names here, but there were so many of them. You had, a, you had a good, legitimate top 10 boxers where you had the premier guys in the top three spots, but you had some depth in the division. So you had good matchups instead of all these walkovers you have nowadays in just about every single weight division. Generally, what happens nowadays, you have the up-and-coming fighter fighting the best up-and-coming fighter who is five years past his prime. You know what I mean? It's the current generation versus the last generation. That's what boxing is today, and that's why boxing is not nearly as popular as it once was. Anyway, that ends the dissertation. Mayweather's going to win. I told you that two months ago. Hey, I could be wrong, but I don't think so. And I like the Mets too as well. That'll do it. Best of luck to you guys. And I'll catch you again tomorrow when we do this again.